Good evening. Uh, the, I was going to say the, the few, the brave, and the strong, uh, but we got a good turnout given the, the weather conditions going on in, uh, in Spokane, so uh, it's beautiful to see all of you uh, here tonight. Uh, I'm Dr. John Caputo. I'm a professor of communication arts and the Walter Ong Scholar in the leadership, master's program in leadership and communication here at the university. And as part of the, our uh, work at the university, we have a major global initiative that kind of takes students around the globe. Uh, we're trying to, we say we'd take you out a tourist and bring you back a global citizen. It's a pretty ambitious uh, project, but that's what our attempt is to do. And so whenever we can have somebody come and talk and share with you, and we're thinking about that and how that is best seen, it's, it's our opportunity. Uh, I want to say a few words. Because of the weather, we might have people coming in late or coming in, so don't worry about that. But there will be people still coming in over the next little while. The weather's pretty horrendous out there, so I'm really pleased to see you. But I do want to thank a couple of the co-sponsors of tonight before we actually get into tonight's program. So welcome. Welcome to everybody. I see a lot of students in the audience. I'm always pleased to see uh, students in the audience. And also to all the community people who came to support this event, both from our program and the Greater Spokane uh, Eastern Washington, North, uh, North Idaho uh, community I'm on this. Co-sponsors of tonight's event are, are the Master's Program in Communication Leadership, from which I come. Also, the Northwest Alliance for Responsible Media, whose interest is in media literacy and how to promote media literacy and open viewing and multiple stories. And so part of that project is to sponsor uh, public television. So this is a co-event with KPS Public Television tonight. Also, the School of Professional Studies at Gonzaga has helped support this project, along with the Center for Global Engagement, uh, who runs most of our study abroad programs, who helped sponsor this event tonight. Uh, in addition, the Faculty Speakers Committee here at the university gave us uh, a little bit of funding, and of course, uh, KSPS uh, Public Television. So this is a co-sponsored event, uh, raising funds for both our projects in Italy, as well as KPS, KPS, KSPS Public TV. Uh, the, those of you who can uh, watch later in the evening, there actually is a telethon where Rick Steve's shows will be shown on uh, uh, KSPS. Uh, you can get it off of different uh, numbers. I'm not going to tell you the station to tune in there. But some of us have volunteered to go up there and work the phone bank tonight. And Rick, of course, will be there talking and sharing uh, some of his programming. He might tell you the particular episodes that will be shared there tonight. Um, I also want to thank members of our planning committee. Uh, Dr. Heather Crandall and uh, Kathy Gustafson of uh, our program, Anne Price in the Center for Global Engagement, Emily Cagle, who's my graduate assistant, who's been very, very helpful for all this work, and uh, Catherine uh, Katuska Kohut in the Study Abroad Office, and of course, all the folks at uh, KSPS. Uh, one of the things you see some of these people with sort of sandwich boards going around, uh, we do have a raffle, and later tonight there will be a raffle. Uh, Rick's Europe Through the Back Door organization has donated a series of uh, beautiful gifts. The suitcase has been in my office all week and I just wanted to take it and keep it, but no, it's part of the raffle, as well as 80 DVDs of all the European uh, Through the Back Door programming that he's done, as well as other accessories and materials that'll be in that raffle. The raffle will be at the end of the speaking engagement, so you have to be here to win the raffle. If you have about raffle tickets, you still have a chance. The raffle money is going for a scholarship program for people in our overseas study program uh, in Kai. So if you want to buy raffle tickets, some of our students are wandering around uh, with those raffle tickets. So there's gifts tonight as well. And in addition, uh, Rick has donated a gift for each member of the audience that we have that we'll share with you, though, if they haven't already been uh, handed out. I just uh, am extremely pleased to be introducing to you tonight our special guest, who is Rick Steves. I had the good fortune of wandering into Europe through the back door approximately 20 years ago and finding Rick's travel books and television series always informative. My oldest son, who's now 34, has seen me watching Rick Steve so many times over the years that he now does an excellent, if irreverent, impersonation of uh, Rick Steve. <laughs> you have to know my son Giovanni to understand just how irreverent he can be. Uh, once on a long haul flight from London to Seattle, I sat next to Rick, but he just did a little bit of work and then slept the entire flight home, so I can do a pretty good impersonation of Rick sleeping. <laughs> oh, and he has that neck thing that goes around his neck that really <laughs> helps the whole thing. Really, I have found his recommendations to fit me perfectly. A hotel on Lake Como, 
Lake Led in Slovenia, a small territoria like Il Contadino in Firenze, or a walking tour of Rome, all have worked out great and put me in touch with the local culture, which is what we really aim for with our students, not to go over as a tourist and come back a tourist, but to go over as a tourist and come back understanding the world. Rick Steves is an author, television and radio producer, and writes a regular travel blog. He also created a series of audio walking tour podcasts for museums and neighborhoods in Paris, Rome, Florence, at Venice, and I believe there's a new one out on uh, London if you want a, a podcast of that. As host and writer of the popular public television series Rick Steves Europe, the best-selling author of 40 European travel books, and he encourages travelers to travel as temporary locals. He helps American travelers connect much more intimately and authentically with Europe and Europeans for a fraction of what mainstream tourism costs. So when I had four kids, people said, how can you afford to go to Europe? I have Rick Steves' guy. I follow Rick Steves. He says this little hotel in Venice, all the hotels in Venice are sky high. This cheap place with the bird cage and the parrot speaks in Italian, perfect for me. Uh, I, was, I was jealous of that bird. I thought, oh, the bird's bilingual and I'm not. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I, I got there, right? Over the past 20 years, Rick has hosted over 100 travel shows for public television and numerous pledge specials, raising millions of dollars, and that's what he's going to be doing later tonight up at KSPS. He also created two award-winning specials for public television, Rick Steves European Christmas, and the groundbreaking Rick Steves Iran. For several years, Rick Steves Italy has been the best-selling international guidebook sold throughout the United States. I don't see very many uh, people traveling in Italy without a Rick Steves uh, book, and sometimes they even set it on the table because there's a discount for the food <laughs> with the Rick Steves guide. There's pluses and minuses of that, and he can share that with you. Um, in 2009, uh, Rick, Steve, Rick tra tackled a new genre of travel writing with his book, uh, Travel as a Political Act. And that's what the talk tonight will be, Travel as a Political Act. Reflecting on how a life of travel has brought his own perspectives, and travel can be a significant force for peace and understanding in the world. It was this book, this book that caught my attention a year ago, because it rang true from my experiences. I had hoped our students would learn through our CAI project and other programs we have in Florence and places around the globe, something different than just going there, staying in nice hotels, sampling Italian food. In fact, some people have came back from Italy and told me the only problem with Italy is there was no good Italian food. And when I asked them, what, what? Well, what do you like about Italian food? And they'd say, oh, the Olive Garden, or, and I'd say, Oh, well, there's the problem. There's the problem. A small trattoria owned, run by uh, Giuseppe and, and Joanna is not going to be like the Olive Garden. It's going to be the real thing as opposed to the not real thing. So uh, I'm really happy uh, that when I read this book and what it said and what it meant about world peace, I immediately got on the phone last spring and called uh, Rick Steve's uh, organization in Edmonds, Washington, inviting him to come to Gonzaga. Unfortunately, we couldn't afford him. He couldn't come, uh, but his publicist, Ashley, said, but sometimes he does come over to Eastern Washington for pledge drives and other purposes. If he's out on a book tour, maybe he could come for no cost if you could, could just wait and be patient. And sure enough, this past spring, I got a call from Ashley. Uh, I was just on a, getting ready to go to Italy that very day, and she said, he could come in November. Oh, wow, really? Really? Yes. And so the idea was he would come, we would do a joint project with KSPS or the Pledge Drive, and he's here uh, really uh, in this weather, came up from San Francisco earlier in the day. So we're very happy that that happened, uh, that he, his office called back, and that today, tonight, all of you can ask questions and learn from uh, Rick's experiences. Now. Rick is outspoken on the, on the need for Americans to fit better into our planet by broadening our perspectives through travel. He is also committed to his own neighborhood, however. He's an active member of the Lutheran Church. He's a board member of Normal, uh, working to reform marijuana laws in the USA. And Rick has provided his local YWCA with a 24 apartment building which houses homeless women. So he's not only global, he's local. We have an expression in our program uh, 
think globally, act interculturally. And for our, from my experience, Rick typifies that model that we have. I'm pleased to welcome Rick Steves to Gonzaga University.